and now I'm also sharing my screen just showing you sort of a, a view of the Qualtrics window. Um, but before we get going too far, I just want to get a general sense of um, where people are at right now to start. So I'm going to launch a poll. Um, so hopefully folks will be able to see the poll. Um, I just ask, you know, sort of where you're at with Qualtrics. And there's no right or wrong answer here. What I've found is that everybody tends to learn from everyone else regardless of whether they think they're a ninja or not. Okay, looks like we've had most people vote. I'm going to just go ahead and share that out to you so that you can see. So uh, with a decent mix, we've got some people who've never used it. We've got about half of the folks that are just getting started, and then uh, some more folks who have some comfort with the tools. So that's good to know. Uh, hopefully the whoever said they were a ninja uh, is going to be sharing a lot of their useful information with the people who are just getting started. That's the whole goal here. Now one more question for you. I know I don't like the idea of uh, homework, but uh, in our sort of schedule for the course, we did ask if people would uh, take a look at the basic training video from Qualtrics. Um, so I'm just whether people have had a chance to look at that and don't feel bad if you say no. It's, I don't, no one's getting graded on this session. This session is really about us being able to learn from each other. So it looks like uh, most folks have had a chance to take a look at the uh, basic training video from Qualtrics. That's great. And uh, that just gives me a little bit of an idea of sort of who's here, why they're here, and all that sort of thing. So who am I? My name is Steve Judd. I'm an IT person at the University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension. And I am also the chair of the network literacy community of practice, which is part of the Military Families Learning Network. Um, I've been using Qualtrics for a couple of years uh, when the University of New Hampshire purchased a license so that all UNH staff, uh, faculty, and students have access to Qualtrics. Uh, prior to that, sometimes we used SurveyMonkey and uh, I had created sort of our own homegrown form builder app that many people used and I think I almost have that finally shut down now and everyone's moved over to Qualtrics. Um, joining me in sort of coordinating this session is Bridget Scott and Bridget if you're on can you uh, introduce yourself please? Sure. And like I said before, if, if folks aren't actively speaking, if you can mute your microphone, it helps reduce feedback. Thanks, Steve. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, Bridget. Um, my name is Bridget Scott, and I am the Program Development and Evaluation Lead for the Military Families Learning Network. Um, I am based out of Virginia Tech. And I do work with Steve uh, on MFLN. Like he said, he's part of our Network Literacy CA. Um, so I've been working with Qualtrics for about two years now. Um, I did not indicate that I was a ninja. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I like Qualtrics a lot, and I find it to be a really useful and powerful tool. I'm always learning about it, and um, I'm looking forward to that sharing what experience I can with you over the next couple of weeks. Great. Thanks, Bridget. Um, everybody else will have a chance to sort of hopefully jump in and ask some questions, introduce yourselves as we go along. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background about what this session is all about. Um, 
I find for myself, I guess I'm the only, I can only speak for myself, um, that sometimes <laughs> learning on my own can be a challenge to stay motivated, to find the answers to questions I have, to um, just share, share what it is that I'm learning. Um, and so what we've done a number of times in the past is to form sort of these informal learning communities where we have a cohort of folks. We had about, uh, I think, 70 people sign up for this uh, two or three week session, um, all of whom are going about the process of learning Qualtrics. So a lot of that is sort of on your own. We're not going to try and recreate uh, the videos that other folks have already created that walk you through the mechanics of Qualtrics, but to provide a community where you can uh, feel free to ask questions. I'm just going to mute everybody for a second. Okay, I was getting a whole bunch of feedback, so I apologize, but I had to uh, mute everyone because I was losing my train of thought as I was hearing myself echo in my ear. Um, if anybody wants to speak to the entire audience, uh, feel free to uh, raise your hand using the, the panel over on the right, or just uh, say something in chat and I'll try and keep my eye on it and uh, we'll get you in here. So what I'm getting at is this is not a course where Bridget and I are the teachers and we're going to lecture you and go through, you know, step by step how to do things. This is really an opportunity for, for each of you to uh, help each other, answer questions for each other, ask questions of the group if you have them, um, give some insights when you find something really cool in Qualtrics because it has all sorts of uh, nooks and crannies that you discover things. Um, share that in the Google Plus community um, and folks will have a chance to respond. I also noticed uh, when I was looking at the community that someone had already shared the survey that they had done. Well, maybe not. I thought I saw that pop through, so I'll have to check. Um, but you're able to, what, one of the things that we would like you to do in this first week is to actually make a survey, whether it's a uh, demo survey like they walk you through in, in some of the basic training, or if it's something preferably that you're going to actually use in your job, and then share it with the community and let people take it, give you some feedback on it, and uh, maybe offer some suggestions on things they might do differently. Um, it's really an opportunity for each of you to get out of this what you want. Um, it's difficult for us to uh, force you to do anything. Uh, this is really, you're all professionals, you're all adult learners. Uh, you need to be motivated yourself to, to learn about the tool. So with that, I want to go ahead and uh, kind of open this up. Uh, so if anybody would like to ask a question, make a comment about something that they would like to learn in the course, um, I would like you to do that, and if you raise your hand, I'll unmute your mic if you're not able to, or if you put something in the comment um, in the chat pod, I will go ahead and unmute your mic. And I know several of the people in this group, so if no one speaks, I may call on you. Okay, Arlene, I see you have your hand raised, so I'd like to first tell us a little bit about you and then go ahead and give us some feedback.
John, do you, John Baggett, do you want to go ahead and talk to us? Sure. Uh, John Baggett from Oregon State. <clears throat> and I've done a survey and distributed it um, and working on getting the feedback at this point. But um, when you ask us to share our survey, you're going to tell us later on how to share the survey with the community. <laughs> Sure. Um, one of the things, we'll just take a look here, uh, since you asked the question, some people may not be familiar, too familiar with Google Plus, and let me tell you up front that uh, the primary reason that we chose the Google Plus community is that uh, Sarah Boffman and I, along with a, a colleague of mine who's left UNH, Lisa Townsend, did a session like this um, a couple years ago when UNH first went on to Qualtrics. And at that time, Google Plus was sort of the hot new property and it seemed to be a great place to, to have a community like this. I really liked the way it worked and we have uh, people who are already a member of that community before this session started. So we decided to use this area again. So um, there are links. Um, hopefully people have gotten the, the email that I sent through MailChimp. That's something that we will do probably on a weekly basis just to help keep you on track so you know what uh, is coming up. Uh, there's a link to the Google Plus community there. A bunch of people have already introduced themselves. Um, in order to post to the Google Plus community, you need to sign in to Google Plus with a uh, Google associated account. So that typically is going to be your Gmail account uh, for, for people who are on either the extension account or some other organization that uses uh, Gmail as, as an organization. You can sign in with that as well if it's enabled by your administrator. Once you're in the community, if you're logged in, and people can view this if they're not logged in, so you can you can follow along if you have an aversion to creating an account or to signing up, you can follow along, but obviously your active participation is encouraged. Um, when I come into the Google Plus community, uh, I'll have a box where I can just type in a message. Um, and what I would recommend for people to share a survey, um, talking less about using the collaborate feature in Qualtrics, which, which lets people edit your survey, but rather to provide a link to your live survey so that people in the community can take it and provide you feedback as if they were the end user taking the um, survey itself. So once you're in this box, I can go ahead and I can type into the window whatever I want to. Um, so I can say, will you please take my survey? And if I paste a link in there, so for instance, if I came over to my surveys and I, um, folks were all, people who signed up took our online survey. Um, if I go over to the distribute survey link, I can get the URL. So I'm gonna copy that. And when I come back over here, I can just paste it in and I will then have a link and then I just need to put it into a category. So Qualtrics is probably a good one or the discussion category. It doesn't really matter. It'll show up in the main feed. And then you can share that and that gives people an opportunity to follow the link to take your survey and then also use the comment feature within Google Plus to um, provide feedback. So each time you post something, you'll create one of these new uh, cards and people will be able to comment back on that plus one it, which is similar to liking in uh, some other social networks um, and be able to have a conversation back and forth about your particular survey or your particular question. So that's kind of how we would recommend sharing that survey with the community so that um, other people are able to give you feedback about it. Does anybody have questions about that? I'm going to uh, unmute uh, Kimberly Brown. 
Oops, Kim, Kim, you're uh, self-muted, so if you want to unmute yourself and uh, chime in, that would be great. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you great. Thanks. Excellent. So one of the things that we're wanting to learn, um, I'm kind of the representative from our department at Oregon State University, and one of the things we're wanting to learn is at the end of the survey that we're wanting to keep anonymous, uh, that we're wanting to um, be able to link it to another survey that we could build up a focus group that we could ask people questions. Okay. Um. Let's see if anybody has done that before and wants to uh, maybe offer a suggestion on, on how that could be done. I will tell you that um, one of my favorite resources is the Qualtrics Help, the Qualtrics University. I believe what you um, what you're trying to do is basically you want to re do you just want to redirect people to another survey where they can join the uh, where they can sort of join this panel for feedback or are you talking about um, you're capturing something in your anonymous survey that you want to use to populate no so um, I took a training here on campus and they were walking us through of essentially having two separate surveys. So your first survey is your anonymous evaluation feedback. So if, especially since some of us do IRB uh, qualified surveys that we need to keep all that information separate, but giving anyone the opportunity at the end of the survey to essentially be contacted by anyone for any follow-up or if they want to participate in a focus group to help um, share ideas and increase uh, beneficial feedback for our programs. And so I know you have to have two separate surveys because one, if, especially if you do IRB, has to be completely anonymous. And then the second one, you can collect the data of names, emails, contact information to kind of build up a focus group based off of the evals. Yep. That, that makes sense now. Um, is there anybody that wants to, uh, let's see, let's get Bridget because Bridget is my go-to person for a lot of this stuff. Um, Thanks, Steve. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, MFLN does this a lot with our surveys, so we have to do um, a IRB-approved survey after every webinar, um, which has to be anonymous, like you said, but then we do additional, um, we offer continuing education units, um, which to do those, we need to offer a post-test and then be able to send out um, a survey for those who pass the test, or I'm sorry, a certificate for those who pass the test. But to send that out, we need to collect identifying information. So the way we get around that is you have your survey set up, your anonymous evaluation survey, and then you just go ahead and set up a second survey, so um, I'm assuming that you're going to want to be collecting, you know, a name and an email, just basic information to reach out to, to these folks. If you set that up and launch it, launch it, and then copy the URL to that activated survey, you can do a custom end of survey message. And Steve, you're going to have to. Um, Maybe if you can open something up for me. I believe if you open up a survey, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I'm looking for a dummy one that I don't mind messing up. I'm going to pull up Qualtrics. There's, on my... there's an alma. Yeah, I can also give you presentation rights um, if you want. So I think what um, Bridge is referring to is in here where yes. in your survey options you can have a custom end of survey message and um, 
So right now I, I have a custom end of survey message for this particular survey that I'm doing, but I can go ahead and select a different one from my library or create a new message. And if you go into the new message, you could then create a link um, within here. So I can say next survey link and with the link tool up here, I can go ahead and give that a URL. So I could, one method of doing it is just in the end of survey message is to allow, is to put it in, you know, we're looking for people to provide us additional feedback. If you are interested in helping us out, please take, you know, please fill out this form and it would just link them to another survey. Um, that right, they, the, they just need to know that they need to click on the link. Um, we've had some, problems with that that you know some folks think they'll act automatically be directed there but you actually have to click on the live link so some of our CAs do a pretty um, detailed message right there you know thank you for taking our survey if you would like to proceed with continuing education units please click this link um, another really good practice is to always include your email, your name, and your phone number, however you want people to get in touch with you just in case they have trouble. So that's that's the way we do that and it, it works pretty well. And I've seen it also where you make the last question the option of would you like to participate in a focus group and then if they mark yes it goes to the new survey. Right, and that's that's. Um, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of of other folks who are here just trying to figure it out. So I don't want to like get too far down into the weeds. Um, but one of the things that I can find you the link to the article that describes this, but you can do it within the survey flow. So for every survey, there's a flow, and you can have a conditional uh, flow so that if someone responds yes, they want to join then they can get directed um, elsewhere, either to a custom end of survey message or there, there are other ways of linking surveys together. So rather than get too far into that today, um, you know, I want to give everybody an opportunity to uh, ask questions and, and comment and um, kind of see where everyone's at. So I don't want to get too far out in front of everyone, but I'll, I'll I tell you what, I'll share that in the uh, Google Plus community uh, as well so that other people, if they're interested, can see how that works. Um, I think it was Tana forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your first name, asked in the chat about um, can people take this class, which it's really not a class, but eh, we'll let you slide this time. Um, can they join the community as well? And yes, they, um, any, you know, the community is pretty open. It is moderated. Um, I occasionally have to get rid of posts because we get things sort of random money-making survey type uh, posts in there, so I, I get rid of it, them, or if it's someone who's obviously spam, but uh, everybody is welcome to join this community and to, uh, you know, partake in the Google Plus page, and if anybody, um, I will be posting the, the links to the recordings in there, uh, you know, you can forward the MailChimp email that you get to folks, um, if people want to sign up and, and get that as well, they can just uh, fill out our survey that, or our registration form and, and get in that way as well. So I see Sergio is, is thinking about uh, using online surveys for evaluation and program development. Sergio, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're hoping to get out of the out of the session? Uh, 
I unmuted you, Sergio, from my end, but I think you have to unmute yourself as well. Or if there's anyone else that, that has other questions or would like to... Um... All right, Stephen, sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, no, that's fine. Great, so yeah, I'm sorry. I'm Sir Jody Stone with uh, the Oregon State University Extension Service down in southeastern Oregon, and yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a, here within this, this extension program. I have um, not only extension but a research, uh, like many of us, um, in extension, and yeah, I'm. This is the first time that I've have access to uh, to Qualtrics, and so I want to become. Uh, familiar with how to create a, an effective survey and the the videos that, that you all provided were great and really hitting those key points and keeping it short succinct um, not too long not too short so um, yeah I'd like to do this to conduct some research over extension programs that I have um, and as well as seeing how I'm doing um, by surveying my you know the audience within workshops so it's great to have an avenue to go to in order to, to get these tools and you know be able to, to network with the community of folks. So thanks a lot. Great. We're glad to have you. I think you'll find a lot of the people in the community, both that are partaking of this session and, and others who have sort of gone before, are all interested in uh, sort of that evaluation and program yeah. development perspective. Um, one of the neat things about Qualtrics is that you can use it for all sorts of things. So, you know, people use it for simple registrations. Um, they use it for sort of quizzes or tests to provide certificates to people. Um, I've seen, I think it was Utah State University was using it as sort of a, a intercept page so that you could get information about someone before they got a document from you from extension. Um, so there are all sorts of different ways that can be used and um, hopefully we'll we'll touch on some of those uh, in the community and also in sort of these live interactive sessions. Yeah, I agree. It's it's going to be exciting to, to be able to, to look at that and just how broad the scope is. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Great. Thanks, Sergio. All right. We need somebody not from Oregon to talk. Julia Peterson, I saw your hand raised for a second, even if it was by accident, but I know who you are, so maybe you could talk to us. Okay, can you hear me, Steve? I can hear you, Julia. Great. So I have a question. I'm attempting to use, oh, by the way, so Julia Peterson with uh, New Hampshire Sea Grant and UNH Cooperative Extension, colleague of Steve's. So I'm attempting to use Qualtrics for um, conducting some interviews and the reason I was tempted to do that of course is to be able to have a sort of a script and to make data collection um, easier for um, whoever's conducting the interviews. Is this an appropriate use of Qualtrics or am I trying too hard? Again, in this kind of community, I, I'll ask if there's someone else who wants to respond to this question first. So if I have you muted, just uh, put in chat and say you want to talk. Even if it's just to say that you have the same question. Okay, Arlene, I'm going to unmute you. I think you still need to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you, Arlene. Oh, great. Okay, I just had to finagle with a headphone. Yes, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm at uh, Cornell University uh, Cooperative Extension in uh, upstate New York, and looking at using the Qualtrics for 
uh, program development. I'm in a, a project group, a cohort here, I'm looking at program development on the extension and, and uh, really want to utilize this as a tool for the administrative end. Um, we have a lot of evaluations of programs and, and 4-H and, and a lot of our agricultural programs, but um, really looking at developing tools and a process for evaluating the administrative end of, of some of our agricultural programs and how that's run and, and having uh, a regular feedback. So I'm working on starting up a new regional ag program and really wanting to benchmark administration of that um, versus other administrative programs. So I'm really interested in some of those advanced logic flow. I thought the um, the, the uh, videos were great. Um, I have to do a presentation on uh, a survey and it was just right on time to really help me uh, formulate it and put it together. So I'm looking forward to this class and I hope to be a Qualtrics ninja at the end. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Eileen. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anyone who wants to speak to Julia's question? Maybe, Julia, you could just sort of succinctly restate it for a second. And then I'll, I'll respond if no one else does. So um, again, what I'm trying to use Qualtrics for um, is to prepare for some, to conduct interviews. Um, I was attracted to Qualtrics because I can sort of write a script within there, within certain blocks, and then um, it, I was hoping it would make data collection for the interviews easier because I can put up some multiple choices with text boxes so people can elaborate. And I'm wondering if other if this is an appropriate use of Qualtrics, if anybody has some experience using it in that way um, to capture data gathered through interviews. I, Steve, I can respond. Yeah, Bridget, that would be great. Okay. Um, hi, Julia. I, I've, I've never hi. used Qualtrics for interviews. Um, However, I mean, it, it certainly is one way to go about doing it, especially if you're, you know, doing it on a budget. The only downside, of course, is that you can't draw out um, the people you're interviewing as they respond. So, you know, it's very one-sided, but, you know, certainly you can do it, and, I mean, um, as a more of a qualitative person, uh, I would encourage you to be prepared to do more of a qualitative analysis <laughs> and just use open-ended text. I mean, I suppose multiple, um, depending on your question, a multiple uh, choice answer might be realistic and then, like you said, add in an additional text box option so they can explain. Or maybe you can set it up, you know, using multiple choice and then for every single question, have please explain why you know this is your answer or this is your response. Um, I would just I would just say that the only thing you might lose is that richness of you know the the conversation piece that often comes out in an interview. Uh, I I don't know if it helps you, but I'm going to be doing some online focus groups for MFLN using Blackboard. Um, and that's another approach that you might consider if you have access to that option is to set up um, basically a, a little um, classroom area and post questions. It could be asynchronous and, you know, respond back and forth to folks. So it's a little more of an open environment. Um, and I'd be happy to talk with you about that outside of this training if you're interested. Great. Thanks, Bridget. Um, Thanks, Bridget. I did see a question going through uh, chat as well. Uh, Karen was asking about, uh, in the video, it talked about a p-value and wanting a p-value to be 0 0.05. And so in, in the most layman terms, because I'm sure I would get wrong if I try and be too exact, um, the p-value in statistics is essentially trying to say what is the likelihood that you would get a result purely by chance. Um, and so a p-value of 0.05 means that five times out of 100, 
you would get the effect that you're observing, whether that's a, a linkage between two questions or what have you, um, five times out of 100, you'd get that just by pure chance. And so P.05 is just a commonly used um, sort of cutoff for where someone might say if the P value is less than 0 0.05, then something that they're observing is significant. Um, there's a whole lot more to it than that, but uh, I think hopefully that will su suffice to um, explain that. So are there other folks that uh, would want to talk about how they're doing things? I also saw someone ask a question about uh, sending out reminders. I have to scroll through chat to see who said that. John, I think you said that, so I'm going to unmute you and maybe you can ask, ask the question or, or talk about what your situation is. Yes, I forgot. Am I muted still or can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. Oh, good. <clears throat> um, so I've sent out the survey and waited, uh, and I had like 30% return, and it, it, it's a survey that I'm sending to all 4-H staff in the state uh, trying to figure out where we're at with um, after-school programming. And um, so now at the point I want to send out a reminder because I would like to have 100% reply so we know what the level of after-school programming is in the state. So my, um, and I haven't got to the point of, uh, I know that I can send out a reminder, but I haven't gone through the process of doing it. Okay. Um, first I'll say you're very ambitious to strive for 100%. <laughs> I'm not sure I could do a survey of two people and get a hundred percent response, but um, more power to you if you can. Uh, let me see here if I have a survey where I used a panel in here. So just for folks who, again, this is maybe a little bit more advanced topic uh, than than some of the others. Um, there is a a feature within Qualtrics, and I think we're we're asking folks to touch on it sort of in the towards the end of this uh, learning session. Um, but it's it's using a panel to distribute your um, survey or your your form. And so when we go under the distribute survey, um, we would take a look under the email history. And again, I don't think I have a particular um, survey in here that I used a panel for. I think most of mine were anonymous, um, so I do in a different environment. Um, but when you go under email history, you'll have the option. You'll see you'll see what what emails have been sent, and then I believe it's over to the far right. There's a drop down where you can choose to send a reminder, and it will only send to those people who have not. Uh, completed the survey. So I'll uh, also take a look and see if I can find, I know that within Qualtrics University there's a uh, detailed instructions on how to do that and I'll try and post that to the Google Plus community as well. Thanks. Does anybody else have something to add to that or, or similar questions? Okay. Uh, Lynn, did you have something to add or another question? Yes, I just wanted to say um, for our UNH Cooperative Extension Fitness Challenge, um, we sent reminders to folks that had not filled out the survey. And um, first, the first step is to create a message. So you're going to create a message. Um, in, in Qualtrics 
under the um, it's a, it's actually under the reminder email section and then you just send it um, as you would send um, any it, it's pretty easy you just create the email and, and then you hit send and it just sends like you said it just sends to those folks that have not filled it out thanks yeah and like I said there I know um, because I'm pretty sure the first time I had to do that I had to go out and look in the in the uh, help community they call it Qualtrics University to find that and uh, it's again I think Qualtrics does an excellent job of providing very detailed uh, documentation for almost all of the things that you you would want to do great thanks Um, Arlene, do you want to go ahead and uh, talk about the the interview usage of Qualtrics? Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yep, we can. Okay, great. Yes, we okay. can. Yes. Okay, thanks. So yes, um, we we had a process for um for selection of being in a, a special um uh, program development cohort here at uh. CCE Cornell and they utilize Qualtrics for that uh, online uh, interview slash application process and so again I think just having been an interviewee I think it's very helpful for the demographics and to see if you're getting a diverse audience to identify the level of education training um, so I think you have to be very clear on what metrics you're looking for from your applicant pool um, that is quantifiable that you can use multiple choice uh, type uh, formatting for but I think still with interviews at the end of the day it is pretty qualitative so again you have to be clear about what you're looking for and provide um, various uh, open-ended questions and so in our process we actually had scenarios where um, you know, give an example of how you handled this type of situation, give an example of how you created this type of program, give an example of how you would resolve this type of issue um, so that people can utilize um, their, their life experience or experience in other contexts, whether it's volunteer work or with another organization, um, so you can see if they have what it is that you're looking for. Um, but again, you still have to be very clear in your uh, own mind of what it is that you're looking for. So I, I would be curious to see the report in terms of how they were able to, to generate um, the data uh, from that. Um, but that's kind of how they did it. Great. Thanks, Arlene. Mm -hmm. Um, Christina Job or Job, I'm sorry. Um, you asked a question in chat, so I unmuted you. If you want to unmute your own microphone, maybe you can ask it for the group, and we'll see if anybody has a good answer for you. Mm, not too good. You're a little garbled. I don't know. That's uh, worse. It's still <laughs> staticky, so try one more time. I don't know. Oh, it's still pretty bad, so I'll just read your question. How's that? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so it, folks should be able to see it in the chat, but uh, Christina was asking, what if you sent the survey to a panel but wanted anonymous results? Would it still be able to send a reminder? What does everybody think of that one? Yes. So, so Lynn says she doesn't think you can do it. Um, there, there are difficulties. Send reminders to everyone. That's Mary's idea: is that you can just, uh, you know, send out a reminder 
to the people that you originally sent the survey to and, and just say if you have not yet completed the survey, um, please do that. So that's, that is definitely an option. I think the biggest issue is that um, you are able to anonymize results. So one of the options, and, and again, this is one of those things you could go into the Qualtrics University and search for anonymized results. Um, it, I don't think that it is a perfect solution to both use panels and to um, tell people that the responses are anonymous. It, it's probably good enough but it is definitely something that you would want to consider from the perspective of, uh, for example, IRB, if it's an IRB issue, um, because, you know, you are obviously getting some information just in, in the use of the panel about who has or hasn't completed your, your survey. So it, it's something to be careful of, but there is an option within uh, Qualtrics that you can anonymize results. And that just tries to strip out uh, most of the identifiable information. Okay. Uh, Jeffrey, do you want to, let me just unmute you and maybe I can pick on you since I know you. Um, Jeffrey, you're unmuted now. Yeah, I was just wondering um, if there are free tools online to improve the visual appeal um, of a survey beyond just the look and feel selection button. Um, you know, I think uh, using um, script um, in particular, um, I don't know if there's like a, a place where people write scripts and then just have it, where people can just copy paste it in. That's my question. Great, thanks. Um, we have somebody here who's a ninja, so they might be able to uh, tell you or have some experience. Um, I I can tell you that there. Are, you can find um, sort of custom JavaScript that's been written for Qualtrics. People will uh, share that within the sort of the forums within Qualtrics or even out on Stack Exchange or other places. Um, I can also tell you that it can be difficult to troubleshoot unless you're a JavaScript ninja. Um, you can also use custom style sheets uh, within your, you know, custom CSS within your survey to sort of do other things to the look and feel. Um, and as Sarah's mentioning in chat on LinkedIn, there is a Qualtrics group and yeah. it tends to be um, very advanced. So there are a lot of those types of questions about JavaScript and, you know, getting collapsible questions and, and things like that. Um, so there are definitely places to go and ask. I don't know, has anybody uh, who's with us, has anybody used sort of custom styles within their surveys or are people pretty much just using sort of the look and feel options? And I'm just showing uh, the look and feel areas where you can actually change how your uh, survey appears. And so the University of New Hampshire sort of has their own standard. But again, if you go over into advanced, you can actually add your own style sheets. So if you had a web designer who knew what they were doing and, and could grab out all the right classes and tags and all that sort of thing, uh, you could actually style this in, in a bunch of different ways. But you can do some general, you know, you can make some changes uh, yourself just as far as the, the different fonts that can be used, the different colors for, you know, text, question text, choice text, background, all that sort of thing. And so under background, you can choose whatever color you want. 
do you know if there's data that shows whether uh, improved visual appeal improves the response rate of uh, of a survey? I do not know that off the top of my head. Does anybody else know that? Okay. I don't I don't know that chances are there is research about that. <laughs> there seems to be research about pretty much everything, so I I would not uh be surprised. I mean, I think in general, you know, it's you only ask questions that you really need the answer to. You know, you don't force people through a long slog of questions just because you're curious. Um and to to kind of keep it simple. Uh, one of the big things that, that you've probably seen if you've played around with Qualtrics at all is that they now offer kind of the, the with the preview, um, what it will look like on a mobile device. So when I'm looking at my survey, I can see, okay, this is what it's going to look like on a mobile device. And so, for example, a Likert scale question is not a very good... Um, question type to use if your target audience is primarily on mobile. Um, and there are some things, let's see, like I'm pretty sure this one, this question where you have to rearrange things, I'm not even sure that it does work very well on mobile. Um, there, There is a mobile compatibility advisor as well. So I think my recommendation is, is not that the design needs to be, you know, super fancy, but that you should be mostly aware about the usability of, of the survey itself and that all the questions can be answered. Okay. Um, one of the things I, I think pretty much everyone on, on here um, completed this sort of registration survey that we used. Um, and one of the points of this registration survey was really just also to show you some different question types and styling so that you could get a sense of um, some of the, the options within Salesforce and within Qualtrics. So for example, the rearrange the question, um, you know, rearranging things is, is kind of an interesting way to do it. I'm not sure that I would always recommend it because sometimes it can be uh, people aren't used to it and so they're not sure how to do it. Um, but for instance, the map is one that we like because you can come in here and you can sort of just click on your location and it. Uh, when we're all done, we get a heat map that will show us sort of where all our responses are. Um, around the country. And we did even have someone register from Hawaii. I don't know if they're on today or not. If you're here and you're from Hawaii, it's a little bit earlier for you. Maybe you can just give us a shout out because a lot of us are stuck in cold weather. John asked a question about how many, do we have any idea how many people are using Qualtrics on mobile device? I'm not sure. Um, Bridget, if you know, have any information about that or anybody else has seen any numbers on that. Personally, I think it's going to depend a lot on your survey and your survey audience. Um, you know, probably pretty common that if you're uh, dealing with surveys of your own staff, um, it might tend a little bit more towards desktop usage, um, but as more and more people are connected and they get an email about a survey, if they can just click over and, and take it easily on their phone, uh, it's likely that that they will do it that way. So being conscious of that is probably a good thing. We're coming up on the end of an hour. 
and I want to make sure that anybody who had a question or wanted to talk or wants to know what they should do next, um, feel free to jump in. Um, Lori is asking about can a single state map be used and yes I believe you you can actually use any image that you want um, for the heat map so you can uh, you can uh, use a row of products and let people choose which product they prefer so there there are definitely a bunch of different options with the with the heat map um, I'm pretty sure I can't remember whether Sarah uploaded the state of the map of the United States or that's one of sort of their predefined uh, items that you can use but you can always always use a um, any random image that you want okay so moving forward um, you know we're, we'll have another couple of these live sessions which are really again you know I would encourage people to think of things questions that they have or if you just found something that was really cool that um, you want to share with folks you know this is a good time to do it the Google Plus community is a place where you can do that at any time so uh, you know, you're always free to ask questions in there, to share things that you found. Um, one of the things that we have asked that you do is between now and our next session, hopefully, is to actually create a, a survey. It can be small, large, whatever you want. Um, probably on the smaller side is better if you want a lot of people to uh, take a look at it um, and share it in there. And if uh, and then hopefully all of your uh, cohort mates will take an opportunity to try the survey out, maybe provide you some feedback, and some of that could be about certain Qualtrics features that you might want to try to use, or it could just be about sort of normal online surveying techniques, you know, better wording of questions, ensuring that you're, if you have a multiple choice question, that your choices are exclusive so that people aren't confused. Um, there are a couple more videos that uh, we suggest that you watch. They'll help sort of if you're just getting started, help move you past that basic phase and start to think about some of the other features of Qualtrics. On Monday, uh, you should be getting another email out through um, MailChimp. And if you really don't want to get that, you think it's redundant, you can go ahead and unsubscribe from that list when you when you get that email. Um, it's really just a recap of things that are in the uh, sort of the schedule. Um, I may also be highlighting some stuff out of the Google Plus community if, if I see some interesting things in there that I think are worth sharing to make sure people know that they're there. Um, so Sergio is asking about sharing the survey and so when you go to the Google Plus online surveys community. Oh, so I can see we have a couple more, um, which is great. And there's Sergio's post. So Sergio, when you came in here, you could just click, you can either paste a link into the body of the text, or you can click on the link tap, link button and paste in the URL to your, uh, to take your survey. And then just ask people for some feedback, maybe tell them what the purpose of that survey is. Um, you do have to select a category, again, discussion or Qualtrics would be the most logical ones and share that. And then people will have the opportunity to take that survey and then also to uh, provide you some feedback on it. So I would uh, hope to see a bunch of them in there because I like to look at what other people are doing because I get great ideas about how to do surveys better that way and uh, sort of find some tricks that I haven't seen before. Uh, Karen's asking about the, the link to the recording. I'll post that in the Google Plus community. Uh, it'll end up being uploaded to YouTube and then I'll also include that link in the uh, MailChimp email that I'll probably send out on Monday. I don't want to inundate people with email. Um, so I'm, I'm 
trying to just send that out like once a week just to just to help keep people on track because I know that uh, I sometimes forget things. Sarah might disagree. She thinks I remember everything, but I do forget sometimes. So I'm going to end the recording now.